Hello everyone, it's Wednesday again, time for another coffee break sessions. Um, today we are going to talk about um, how to give your investors reasons to share your content in the time span of a uh, freshly made coffee. Um, I have Lucas with me today, uh, Lucas is also part of the Social Cedar team. Lucas, introduce yourself. Uh, yeah. I'm Lucas. Uh, I do the support along with Bram. Um, I do more the technical support, so the people who have been using the live chat or sending mails asking technical questions generally arrive with me. And then I always try to answer as quickly as possible, so I hope I do a good job. Because <laughs> technical support isn't always, uh, you know, you don't, you don't get mails from people saying, oh, hello, uh, Social Cedar is working wonderfully. It's always like, yeah, there's a problem, so. You probably already have a mail from him, so now you can put the face. You can put a, a face to the name, yeah. yes. So again, um, what we're going to talk about today is like um, all the questions that our customers mainly had about why do we become ambassadors investors and what kind of reason do they have to share my message as a brand. So frequently asked questions. Um, but the, free, uh, the first question we're going to ask is just to test all our poll again today. So how are you? You're able to answer our questions um, in the webinar itself. I'm going to launch the poll and you'd be able to see it right now and answer. And this leaves just room for us to see if the poll is correctly working. So for me, I feel awesome today. I like the option, give me coffee and I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> but I like for my coffees on Mondays, I tend to get my, my black, utterly black coffees and more towards Friday, I had cream and sugar <laughs> for yeah. the weekend. I think, I think for signs, if we would do the coffee break on a Monday morning, that the uh, answers to this poll would probably be a bit more different than <laughs> if you would do this on a Wednesday think, afternoon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. With, with Wednesday was a strategical choice. Okay. I'm going to close the poll. <clears throat> no, still 50 people. Percent. People yeah. will be fine when they drink coffee. Yeah, so natural, it's... very natural. OK, let's get into it. So um, main reasons why your employees are not sharing your content. Uh, one of the first ones um, I think is going to be that you as a marketeer are always enthusiastic about what you made. Not only as a marketeer, but like in general, if you do something for your job, you're probably enthusiastic about it. Hopefully, yeah. So it's the same thing with the content that you made. You have a, a natural thing for what you created, so you really want to share this. But I think that like marketeers do not always emphasis towards the outside world like why they made the specific choice of the theme they are going to bring or why people should share. So if you are a marketeer and you want that your colleagues are uh, also willing to share your content, I think it's important to give them a bit of context always. Mm -hmm. Like, why did you choose this to send this to me? And I think the first step there is, again, the context. So again, in Social Cedar, you are able to attach a mail to your campaign always. I think it's very important to give them a bit of more explanation what they should share and what the content is about. Like, they have a very a term that I also use and you also use uh, in, in general big topics, like if you get a big piece of content, uh, mostly at the bottom there's like the TLDR. Yeah, the too lazy did not read. Too lazy didn't read. And it's like the perfect, it captures the feeling perfectly, like people need to know why they received a piece of, of content or what it's for or a, a very short explanation for it at least. Uh, I think that's important. Yeah. I mean, I agree there's not that much uh, I have to add to that. I mean, as a marketeer, it, it, of course, your content needs to be, to, be, to be made like that, and it's also interesting to others, I think. Yeah. One of the things that we very often see here is that we need to make a difference that with ambassador marketing, you're not sending... When I share something, it's because on Facebook um, or LinkedIn, um, I share it because of genuine interest, and mm -hmm. you know, you, you're not sharing something that's saying, you know, this is the best product ever, you know, you, yeah. you share something because it's like, uh, oh, hey, this was 
a really good trailer for you know the new Star Wars, or you know, then I will share this. Or in the last case, I did mm. not share it because I did not like the trailer. <laughs> um, no, but if, if if it would be like, yeah, Star Wars is the best movie of 2017. Yeah, like. <laughs> I also think that this is an answer to the question um, that we also from time to time get is like um, what would you do with multi-content and then like the, the answer is here how are you going to provide this kind of context for every piece you're going to put available to this ambassador like multi-content for me if you give me the choices to read five pieces of content, one is going to take a very long time yes. for me to read them all. I'll probably lose my interest like within the first 10 minutes and I won't, haven't shared anything of those five pieces of content. Yeah, I think I, think I, I agree completely. The thing with multi-content is in the day and age of social media, it's just everything needs to be, you know, quick and yeah, fast. And it's like, hey, yeah. interesting piece of information, but yeah. it needs to be in a very short and, you know, easy, consumable way. Yeah. You don't want it to be complicated. You don't want it to be long. Correct. Um, you know, and it's, it's it, it, I think multi-content, it would make things too much. I mean, imagine you would get a mail like, hey, Lucas, uh, here are five articles of this week and you open the mail and it's just like <laughs> and you read and read. Yeah, it's I would lose interest before, yeah. before it would be yeah I also I think, think so I think it's it's too much for many people nowadays I want to go back to the main question because I define the main question as main reasons why your employees are not sharing your content uh, I think I need to uh, explain this a bit more Ambassadors don't have to share your content. No. Why they share your content is cause is a natural cause, a natural cause of interest that you need to create, not the ambassador. They already probably have some form of natural interest. Again, uh, a platform like Social Cedar is not going to give you an ambassador program. You need to tap in again in that passion, and we talked about it. I think in a previous uh, coffee break session also. But uh, I don't think uh, it's going to be your job to really put it full with call to action, share this message. Mm -hmm. You know, it needs to be a, res uh, a natural cause, cause of the right content and the feeling that they have as an investor from a specific brand. Yeah, I think um, putting bright fluorescent arrows to the share button <laughs> to say share this now on this social media will not really help no. people if they're like. I don't care about this if they think that they're not going to share. So indeed, it's yeah. going to be like a matter of a the content, but indeed, be also the entire you know ambassador program of yeah. your company. How engaged are you with your ambassadors? Yeah. Do they know how, what is going on actually? You know, with your mm -hmm. program, it's 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 all going to be very important. And maybe as an extent of this, um, they don't know they're allowed to, like. I've worked for some major companies and indeed we're moving fast these times like on social media companies change company social media policies change um, I think a few people still presume that posting something about their brand they're working for is not allowed like they're scared like oh if and I you post mean not allowed by the company or by like their social, I think, the social group they're in I think a bit both like maybe scared to share on their social media because one direct directions of their network mm -hmm. but also the net the reaction reactions of maybe their manager for instance yeah. that they're not sure on how it's perceived to, to share something on social about your brand yeah. so I think there's still a certain threshold there that is not sure what's allowed and what's not allowed and the perfect counter for this is just social media training a very clear social media policy uh, within your company and again I think training is even better than only the policy because policies tend to get complicated not everyone reads it and everybody needs to be aligned with how social works within yeah, and this, this comes back to what we very often see. If you're going to start an ambassador program, it's not going to come from itself. It's True. not you, you. It's not you're going to use yeah. social seed, and suddenly everybody's going to share. Yeah. If you have, we have we have um, quite a few companies with an an older target audience. Mm -hmm. I think I can say. Right. Um, you know, a lot of people who I both my grandparents are on social media, so they're in their seventies, uh, eighties. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's okay to call them. To the older people, 
but you know they, they use social media but definitely in, in, in those in those cases and if you're going to have older employees it's going to be something indeed you need to train them for and yeah. if you're going to have especially with employees it should be an easy thing like hey you're a company Correct. it doesn't necessarily need to be in the in you know for social seed or for our master program it can just be like hey you know social media are an important part of many people's lives yeah. right now it could help you stay in touch with your family mm -hmm. um, for older people it can be a great way to now learn how do these things work? Are they safe? Because I think that's like a lot of concern, like how safe are they? You know, they're scared of other people. So okay. definitely the training I think could be a very positive way, not just for your master yeah. program, but for your company as a whole. Correct. So maybe before we move onwards, let me rephrase this just one more time. Uh, I've, been, I've, I've said it several times and I'll keep say, saying it. Internal investors are interested regarding content <laughs> for your brand, so it's their natural environment, it's the environment they work in, so as an extent of this, they are willing to share your message naturally. Like managers, if you have something that could go towards uh, managers, then it might be interesting to give them the context. It's not only interesting content, but if you share this content on your social media, it will also be very good for your personal branding to show that your network, you're also an important person that does important <laughs> things. Um, for sales, this will be social selling. For HR, this will be recruitment. So I think these people deep down know that's good for them, but you, it's not a bad thing to remind them. When mm -hmm. you send them a campaign through Social Cedar or whichever program on your ambassador program, remind them why it's also not only about the content, but also about themselves. Yep. And of course, it, it, it also kind of depends which social network you use. For example, the messages someone's going to share on Facebook are, of course, going to be different kinds of messages than mm -hmm. someone on, on, yeah. on LinkedIn. Um, for example, on Facebook, I'm, you know, we, we social cedar send out also, of course, uh, posts to our own. Mm -hmm about, for example, not necessarily social theater, but ambassadorship or, you know, social selling and whatnot. On my Facebook, I'm not going to share it because the majority of my friends on Facebook, you know, they're students, um, they don't care, you know, I just quit school, so it's not a weird thing on mm -hmm. Um But on LinkedIn, where I have more professional connections, of course, more people are going to be genuinely interested in it, so. Very true, and but that's maybe a, a general tip. I also want to give everyone here, like, if you, are going to spread your content on social media, leave the option open because what yep. you're telling us now is that you have your preferences. And I think that these preferences will be for everyone very different. I still know, know a lot of people that like network professionally on Facebook or uh, the other way around that like casually post on LinkedIn, which is nothing wrong to do. Yeah. I don't do it personally, but I know a few people who do, and I think it's a great tip to leave all the options open. Yeah, it, def it depends, of course, the kind of person you are, the kind of network you have, but mm -hmm. indeed, this is a personal case of mine. Cool. Um, we were talking about social media policies, and I'm going to put up another poll where you can vote so that we can discuss how things are going at your side. Does your company have a social media policy? You can answer yes, no, or not sure. Um, so I think here we can see like how companies really adapt to social media. If they don't have a social media policy, I think I should suggest they urgently get one because if you're running an ambassador program and you don't have a social media guidelines, for instance, uh, then it, it will be a very much a very big threshold for these investors to really get into it. Um, let's see how it goes. Of course, it depends all about how strict you make your, uh, you know, your policy. If you're, if it's going to be a very strict policy, that's simply like, hey, uh, no, no Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. So let's see the results. Um, 73% said yes, 27% 27 said no. So there are still some companies that don't have a social media uh, policy guidelines. 25% uh, now. Yeah, that's. Um, but, but like again, the majority says yes. Uh, I think that's a very good thing. Um, to be honest, it probably depends a bit on what kind of company you work for. Like a big international company, of course, of course we'll have one. If you work in like a small store, yeah. where, you know, you may not really. If you, it's like your own small little company with yeah, a few correct. people. Correct. Okay. So, 
it's not only about, like we said, the, the content and uh, not only about um, the, uh, the feeling, but also on how you interact with them. The, like the previous Coffee Break sessions, it was like, how do we get ambassadors engaged enough? Um, we have companies that are doing ambassadorship for four years now. It's a very long time. And again, I want to say, because I get the question a lot, gamification. Like, what do we want to give our investors so they will keep on sharing? Gamification, it's not going to work. We've done it, we've tested it, we've seen a lot of cases, we see a lot of people try it, and people are excited in the, in the first place because they can win this mm -hmm. iPhone, people join in, and then they get an email that didn't want the iPhone. Yeah. And then they get a second email that they didn't want, want the iPhone, and then they are uh, ambassador off, yeah. and that's it. So it really doesn't work this no, way. You I think with gamification, you completely lose the essence of what you're trying to bring. And um, this is, of course, again, personal. But when I, on Facebook, see posts like, you know, share this and have a, you know, a chance to win an iPhone, mm. um, two things. A, personally, I don't really care about those kind of things. Like, it's, it's, you, see them, you see them passing by. Um, you know, you read them, and it's like, OK, I mean, it's a marketing tactic, but mm. that's fine. But I think a lot of people also, you know, and that's going to be the problem. The second thing, like a lot of people are sharing it without actually, you know, caring for the message that you bring. You know, they don't, they don't know. The story, the story will yeah. go about the iPhone they, they instead read it, of the content. They, they, they share it to win you know, the iPhone and yeah. not like for the tickets to the concert or something. Yeah. But they don't really care about the rest. So. Uh, what we want to create, the kind of engagement, is that the result of your program should be that your ambassador will talk about you also offline mm -hmm. to their friends. And of course, they can talk about the content that you sent them, mm -hmm. that you don't want them to talk about the iPhone that they won, because that's a very different story. No, but maybe I want to go back a little. Uh, I have one poll left, I believe about the use of social media because I really was interested in like this day and age are you able to use social media on your work floor and in what conditions so I'm going to put up another poll and let's see the question is does your company allow the use of social media during working hours so how is that for us? <laughs> because how I is think, this for us? I think everybody knows that the answer here is yes. Because if you weren't yeah. allowed to use social media, it would be very difficult to help. Correct. Uh, we're very customers. free. Yeah. We're very free. But how do you think it should be like in bigger companies? Well, I always find it dangerous um, to put on to put restrictions on those kind of things. For example, I'm 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 young. I just got out of school. I started working. Um, in, in August, so mm -hmm. you know, I just I graduated uh, earlier this year. For me, it's, as someone who would then, let's say, arrive in a big company, and there would be many rules, and one of the rules mm -hmm. would be like, yeah, you can't even use social media because you know it's too distracting or whatever yeah. the reason is. I'm in a way I can understand what they're going for, but it's a very wrong way to do it because I would feel very untrusted it would be a very unpleasant feeling to be like Correct. you you cannot use this because if we allow you to use this you're going to abuse yeah, 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 yeah. not going to correct you know not going to work or something that's the impression they give you correct whereas I feel like I mean of course if you're in an hour spending 55 minutes on Facebook not working that's a problem but to say now that those two minutes perhaps in an hour are going to to harm what you're doing I mean it's a, it's a good way to I think release some stress mm. during working to be like that was a very different, different, difficult. Sorry, phone call. I'm quickly going to, yeah. you know, check messages or talk to someone or you know, I need to vent to someone. That's something that I do a lot. Correct. Let's see the results. Eighty percent, eighty-one percent said yes. Uh, we have do. Uh, we are able to use social media. Six percent said no. Thirteen percent was not sure, <laughs> but I do it anyway. That's what I would do. <laughs> That's what I would do. Uh, um, so I think that those are interesting results. Um, of course, there are going to be settings where it's not allowed. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, it's like you said, you need to put the trust there. Uh, it's something very current, very now. Social media is happening. Uh, it should be allowed, I think. Yeah, in, uh, I'm actually novels. very curious to the 6% no answers. 
Okay. Um, so we have a little bit of time left, and I just want to uh, go through one thing. Uh, like one more question is, uh, or something, a trend that I've seen is like the content subjects, um, like the content subjects for ambassadors and for the network of the ambassadors, so the theme about the content mm -hmm. would be very different. Like if you, um, I earlier gave you the example of the wine tasting. If I'm a wine lover and uh, there's a company that provides me a master emails about wine and this wine, uh, this campaign says, yeah, this wine has uh, like this kind of complex taste. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this and this. Like this is good for me because I, I like the, the, the technical mm -hmm. stuff. Like my network is not really interested. I wouldn't in, care. I wouldn't, you wouldn't it. care. That's what I'm saying. Like what you could do to make it more interesting, not also for the network of the ambassador, is like give uh, uh, ten reasons why or mm -hmm. ten wines that could be a very good thing for your first date, for instance. Um, and like for. Technology, um, like they could give you ten reasons on why you shouldn't or should buy the new iPhone, or whichever compared to your brand. Mm -hmm. um, I think also these are very important things that you also keep in mind. I'm not only talking to my ambassadors, but I'm also yeah, talking to the extent that's in of the my network, ambassadors. Yeah. Very true. I agree. So I think uh, yeah. Um, what can you expect of your ambassadors? That's the last thing we're going to talk about. Um, what you can expect of your ambassadors is once they are engaged, like in a two-way conversation, and they really feel that they are part of a bigger group within your company that is really striving for the brand, that they are generally uh, uh, getting your campaigns that they are not forced to share, then you can see that the the ambassador program is a very nice thing that can go on forever. Yeah, uh, imagine that you're an ambassador if you don't share part of you. That, yeah, yeah, that would be a very bad way of doing an ambassador program. So that's a tip of how not to do it. <laughs> Correct. Um, like the current statistics within Social Cedar are very positive. It's very trending to have an ambassador program right now. Uh, like the, the last week that we've seen is that the impact of an ambassador, like in general, if I share something as an ambassador on my network, I've tested it, I got like 24 hits mm -hmm. uh, or clicks. Not hits, it's not a like, it's not a reshare, but really clicks yep. on the content, uh, which is doing very well. Um, so yeah. That's awesome. Um, I'm not sure there are any questions left. If you have any questions, you can ask them now, or you can email me at bram at socialcedar.com, lucas at socialcedar.com. If you want to join me in the next uh, session, sit on Lucas' place, have a coffee with me, uh, feel free to ask. Um, and otherwise, I will see you next time. Also, before I forget, we will send out a survey uh, about these uh, coffee break sessions. Um, if you close it, you will see it. Please fill it in uh, to give us some feedback um, that we can tune up for next time. Um, hope to see you on the next session. It was a pleasure as always, and take care. Have a nice week. Goodbye. Bye.